Hey guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is April 14th, 2019 and I am so glad to be talking to you once again. So this is the first podcast after our wedding and what am I even doing here? I had originally planned to just take it slow after we get back from our honeymoon, take my time getting back into things and what am I doing? I'm recording a podcast episode about, I don't know, an hour since we got back from our honeymoon. The reason for that is that I am so tired. <laughs> I can't really say I'm jet lagged, but uh, we had an overnight flight or two overnight flights and I'm just exhausted. And I was kind of debating whether to go to sleep or whether to have coffee. And the thing is that I haven't been sleeping very well already and I know I have to work tomorrow so instead of going to sleep I decided to have coffee and record a podcast episode. So the post-wedding podcast is coming to you today from a very tired and possibly jet-lagged, sleep-deprived and Julia. Um, I'm suspecting that things may be a little bit more all over the place than they already are generally. Sorry in advance, that's just the way it is. Um, what I decided to do is to record a quick episode, so I'm not going to go into a ton of details. I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I've been working on that I've been um, finishing in terms of knitting. I'll touch upon the wedding and honeymoon and not sure if I'm going to go into detail. I also have some whips that I'm not going to talk about today because I didn't bring them with me and quite frankly I don't even remember what they're called or what they are or anything right now. So this is going to be a waffly one. I hope that you will enjoy it and if this is your first time watching, welcome. I'm so glad that you're giving this podcast a shot. I'm frankly not sure if today is the right episode to get started but welcome to Crazy Town anyways. Um, and to those of you who are coming back thank you so much and most importantly thank you so 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 much to everyone who commented and sent me messages and sent us messages after our wedding that was just overwhelmingly sweet um i was really overwhelmed and kai couldn't really grasp how many people actually cared enough to write something so I'm just going to say another blanket thank you to all of you guys. I really, really appreciated that. And we both did. Um, thank you. So um, let's check if we're recording. Yes, we are. And let's just get into the podcast. So today I will talk first of all about administration and knit alongs, um, then finished objects and works in progress. Um, some acquisitions and then I will keep all the honeymoon and wedding stuff mostly to the end. Um, so you can just tune in and tune out whenever you're interested. Um, yeah, so we have a group on Ravelry called the Happy Knitting Podcast Group, um, which is always linked right underneath the videos. And right now we are running a knit along that has kind of been hibernating because I haven't been there and I haven't really been promoting it very much. Sorry about that. Um, but the knit along that we are doing is the Stranger Brews knit along or Stranger Brews Cow which is for the Strange Brew collection and pattern by Tin Can Knits. I talked about um, their pattern in the past quite at length, so I'm not going to go into detail, but if you haven't heard about this collection and the Strange Brew recipe, which is basically a design your own sweater pattern, I would highly suggest that you go check it out. And if you're interested, please just feel free to join in. I realize that now is probably not the best time to be knitting huge color work sweaters, but a couple of you seemed interested at the time, so we're just going to keep going. And you guys can let me know how you feel about it. Um, how do you feel about a deadline? Do you think we should maybe run it until the end of May? Is that too much time? Is it enough time? Should we just keep it open? Um, let me know how you feel about it and do join in the chatter. I would really, really appreciate it. And again, for this one you don't need to finish anything so you can just cast on or if you've cast on a strange proof red pattern in the past you can just continue working on it you can join in um, just planning sweaters planning your colors um, it's very very relaxed so yeah that is it in terms of what's been happening in the group um, also i just had coffee and i'm getting very dizzy right now so i'm going to have some water because i thought in advance and 
Ja, yeah. uh. um, Let's talk about some Finnish objects. <laughs> yes, I'm all over the place. Um, I'm wearing one Finnish object, which doesn't really feel like a Finnish object anymore because um, I finished this before our wedding and honeymoon and have been wearing it ever since. So it has been blocked and then it has been worn and I wore this on a plane. I literally just stepped off a plane like this. Sorry to disappoint. So maybe not in the best shape, but what I am wearing is my, what's it called? Um, the Easy One sweater by Hohi Locatelli. She has a, I think, a bulky and a fingering weight version, and I need the fingering weight easy one. Um, and what it is, it's just a very easy, like the pattern name suggests, top-down sweater. I really just wanted something simple, like knitting a sock, where I didn't have to think about anything, and where I could use this beautiful yarn, which is a merino and linen, I think a 90-10 blend of yarn by... Um, Lana Grossa, it's their slow wool lino base, which I don't have the tag for it right now. Very sorry about it, but what it is, is essentially it is just this beautiful navy color, 90% um, merino, and then it has a um, bit of linen in it. But surprisingly, this is a very, very soft yarn, so it has a bit of an almost tweedy effect. But it is very, very soft, very drapey, and yeah, I've been wearing it ever since finishing it, and I really, really love it. In terms of modifications, I have written them in my project pages, so if you're new, I don't do any show notes, but I keep pretty good sh um, project pages on Ravelry. Again, I will try to link to my um, pattern project thingy on Ravelry, and you should be able to tell what I did, but just generally, I think it's supposed to not have any shaping, so it's a very oversized sweater, as you can see, it's got a dropped shoulder, and it's supposed to be just knit straight down, but what I did is I did some decreases to kind of make it more of like a bat wing shape. So my body, instead of going like this, is going very much like this, and it's just a very flattering shape. It's oversized, it's comfortable. Um, I also did a cable detail on the side of the sweater just to spice it up a little bit. And besides that, I think I knit pretty much everything to pattern and yeah like I said I've been wearing it a lot it's a very chilled out relaxed sweater I could definitely see myself um, knitting another one and yeah very happy to have it done and because it is, it is a fingering weight sweater and knit at a relatively loose gauge it's just it's not super warm it's comfortable I think I'm going to be wearing this quite a lot for spring and maybe even summer I don't know so yeah that's my first finished object my second finished object is one that you haven't seen before because I cast it on and finished it um, within six, six days um, during our honeymoon. So this is the only thing I finished um, on a two-week trip. I know, I, I don't know, I've been knitting a lot and I haven't been finishing anything really. But I mean, it's a honeymoon, I'm not there to finish things. Um, but what it is, I cast on this beautiful yarn from my friend Melanie, who has a Braid and Tinker yarn and podcast. Um, she hasn't been podcasting for a while, but I really, really enjoy hers. Um, she sent me this yarn as a gift, I think just before Christmas, which was very, very sweet. And it's this beautiful speckled sock yarn. I'm thinking it's a merino nylon. It doesn't say on a tag, but it's just the most beautiful colorway. And I decided to cast on some socks, and here they are. So I think the speckles just turned out so pretty. Um, I knit these on 64 stitches um, on a US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needle. And as you can see, I just wanted a tiny bit of patterning. So what I did is I did um, a broken rib pattern on the front of the sock. Broken rib just means that you're alternating between ribbing and plain rounds of stockinette. And it just gives this really fun texture. And it just make, made the socks a little bit more entertaining to knit. And I do really like how the speckles came out in both um, the patterning as well as the stockinette, I think. It's just really, really fun. Um, no pattern for it, but like I said, it is super simple. Just look up how to knit a broken rib if you haven't done it before. Um, did my usual garter stitch fish lips kiss heel and yeah, they're done. I love them. I can't wait to wear them. 
And I, like I said, I really enjoyed Melanie's yarn. She isn't paying me to say anything nice about it, but I just, I just loved every stitch of this yarn. The base feels really soft, but also kind of sturdy, so I think it's going to hold up pretty well. So these are my only two finished objects, unless I'm forgetting something, which is quite likely. But frankly, um, I feel like I'm so close to finishing all the things, but I'm just not finished yet. First up, maybe let's start with the one thing that you have seen before. I didn't take this on vacation either, but I think I made quite a bit of progress, so I just wanted to show you. Um, these are my Norse socks, N-O-R-S-E socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it is this beautiful colorwork sock pattern. Um, the original pattern has you knit this chart and then a second chart, which includes colorwork on the heel. But I was lazy, so I just used the first chart and knit the pattern as written. Um, and then it has a plain foot and a, I added a contrasting toe because I just thought it would be fun. I did fish lips kiss heels. So this is the first sock. I think this was done last time I showed these to you. I should have put this on a blocker, but I didn't think ahead. And before we got married, um, I knit pretty much all of the second sock, except for like 10 rounds of a toe. So again, these should be finished. They're almost finished. Not quite. I will finish them today, I promise. And they will be finished um, on the next podcast. So I just wanted to show this really, really quickly. I knit the, um, the leg before we went off to my parents' place, which is where we got married. So then I had like just a stock in that foot to knit while we were there, which was perfect because it was very, very mindless. And I just had this craving to finish as many things as possible before the wedding. Um, the yarn that I'm using, I'm just realizing I don't have any of the tags. Oh yeah, I do. It's right here is Socks Year, which is a yarn by Coop Knits. It's a 75-25 merino nylon base, which I really, really like. Um, and it's in this neon yellow. Uh, yeah, obviously it's yellow, right? Neon pink. Don't know the colorway name, but there's only one neon pink. And then this gray is a melanite. So that's the yarn I'm using. Um, I was in the neutrals and neons yarn club um, for this yarn last year. I think it was pretty much a year ago. So I have quite a lot of 50 gram skeins of this yarn and it turns out it's really good for color work socks, which is what I planned for it. Um, I will say this is a superwash yarn. I don't usually knit superwash yarns um, for color work. But with socks, I kind of think it makes sense because I wash my socks in the machine. So I'm just doing it. I thought I would give it a try and it's working out really well. So that is the only whip that you have possibly seen before unless you've been following me on Instagram. Now I'm going to show you what I got up to knitting on our honeymoon. So I had this here in which was destined to be my... Um, wedding cast on so i had planned to cast on a pair of socks maybe the night before the wedding because we had a dinner with families and i thought i would cast on a very special pair of socks and then guess what happened it was really busy <laughs> um yeah we just got i mean everything worked out really well i'll go into detail later but we were just busy and it turned out i didn't knit for two days because the wedding took up um, all of the time and I mean that's the way it was supposed to go so I have zero bad feelings about it so what I did instead is I took this yarn with me um, on the plane to Mauritius um, where we had a honeymoon and cast on a pair of socks so this yarn is by one of my favorite yarn dyers who is Ali of Laughing Yafu she doesn't update her shop very regularly but she has some beautiful self striping yarns this is the Spiced Jar colorway. And again, almost finished. So I finished the first sock minus the heel. I just knit tubes on the plane. So this is what it looks like. 
and excuse the ladders, I used DPMs, but once I block these, they will, they, they will be fine. It's beautiful, beautiful colorway. I think it's so fun. I really enjoyed um, working with it. So I knit most of this on the plane down there and then knit a little bit while we were there, but decided to kind of keep it for the trip back because this was the only project that I knit on wooden DPNs for the plane, which I don't particularly enjoy, but it's better than not knitting. And I just don't have the brain power to worry about metal needles on the plane. Um, so I think I was about maybe here or when I then just put the sock aside and left it for the way back. And then this morning on the plane, I finished the second sock, except I didn't have a needle to Kitchener. So this is pretty much almost done. Um, these are going to be matching socks. And what do they need? They need some afterthought heels. So I will put the, them in later. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this colorway. I think I might. I think these want to be completely matching without a contrasting heel. And then these will be done. So for these, like I said, I use wooden DPNs. Um, I basically only use them for travel knitting these days. I used to be all into DPNs and I'm just not anymore. I think these are the Knit Pro ones. 2.25 millimeter, um, US size one. And I just did a 64 stitch tube and I really, really enjoy knitting on these. I've knit with Alice Yarn a couple of times, but I think I've never knit with his base. So I've knit with her sparkle base and I knit with her high twist yarn, I think. And this is just her merino nylon base and I really enjoyed working with it. It was a really nice sort of... I don't know, it's plump, but it's it doesn't feel like it's going to felt or anything really quickly. It just felt really nice. I really enjoyed it. And I just think the colorway is a little bit different, which I really enjoy. So that was pretty much my plain knitting. Let me just try not to mess it up. Um, what else did I get up to? I feel like this is going to be such a short episode. I really don't have that much knitting. Um, I cast on a shawl also when we went away. So what I did is I took a set of yarns um, from this German dyer, who is Dibadu. And this is one of their funnies set, which is, you get these sets of um, three 50 gram skeins. And they're kind of twisted together so you don't really see what you're buying, but they're like co color coordinated yarns. And I totally thought these were fingering weight yarns. Um, pretty much until I was almost finished with the shawl. And then I realized this isn't fingering weight at all, even though it feels like a fingering weight yarn. This has 182 meters per 50 grams. So that's, that's like a decay or something, isn't it? Um, so um, this is how much I have left. This is the darkest color out of the three. And my thinking was I was going to knit, so I wanted to knit some kind of faded and asymmetrical shawl. Like I just love asymmetrical shawls and it just is really fun to knit them. I wanted something brainless. Um, and then I decided to cast on the Cafe Knitting Shawl by Stephen West. And the funny thing is that Stephen West uses three skeins, three full skeins, 100 gram skeins of um, La Bienne Aimée Sport, I think. So I was like, oh, I have way less yarn, but I mean, 150 grams of fingering weight should be fine. Little did I know I don't have fingering weight yarn, but I just went for it and I think it's working out really well. So this is the shawl um, in question. So you start on one side with quite only a few, a few little stitches and then you increase and there's different textures. And then I faded the colors. I kind of did it the way that Steven did it, but then I just kind of did my own thing because I wanted to use as much yarn as possible. And I think with the second color, he never, he always stripes it, but I kind of faded it in and then did a solid section and then striped it into my third color. And I really love this part. I really like those two darker yarns I think they're really really amazing this first color is very bright I'm not sure how I feel about it 
but I think as I said, it kind of works and I really, really enjoyed knitting this shawl. This um, is typical Stephen West, but um, so it's kind of out there, but it's not super out there. There's a lot of different textures, so you're like increasing and decreasing and there are slip stitches, girder stitches, different kinds of ribbing. And I think it just um, gives you a really fun effect. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Like this was perfect pool knitting in the way that it was more interesting than just knitting plain stockinette, you know, um, and switching up the colors every now and then. I just really enjoyed this. And it's been a while since I knit a Stephen West pattern. So yeah, that's my cafe knitting shawl. Obviously the title is perfect for me. And I really, really wanted to finish it there. Again, I posted on Instagram, I had about 25 grams of yarn left. Um, I knew I wasn't going to take it on the plane, but I was thinking I could finish this before um, we left um, to the airport. Mm, not, I'm not really even that close to finishing. <laughs> the rows are quite long, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm just going to keep going until I run out of yarn and, or almost run out of yarn and do an I-cord bind off or something. And I think once I block this, it's going to be a good shawl length. It's not going to be a schlanket as Stephen's patterns usually are, but I think it's going to be a nice size shawl. So it'll block out and it's got quite a bit of depth as well. I just don't have the longest needles to show you. But yeah, that is my cafe knitting shawl. I am using US size four, uh, no, US size six or four millimeter needles. These are just some things which I really enjoy. I feel like I went up a needle size from the pattern, but I don't actually know. I just wanted to use a slightly bigger needle size because again, I knew I didn't have that much heritage. Yeah, so that is that. I'm also really enjoying knitting something red because I don't usually knit a lot of red, I feel like. I mean, I'm knitting a red sweater, which I'm not showing you right now, but it's only recently that I've been into this color. And this yarn I actually got at Hohenlohe Yarn Festival last year. So pretty much exactly a year ago, because that's I think next week or in two weeks. Um, so I'm happy to have this out of stash as well. And I've been meaning to try this yarn for a while. And I could definitely see myself buying it again because it's just really fun, like it's a good quantity to have 150 grams and obviously it seems to be enough for like a faded shawl project. Um, so I could see myself getting more of that. And no, I'm not sponsored, I just really like it. Um, what I will say is that this last color, that bled quite badly onto my hands when knitting with it, um, which is fine. But I have a feeling it will bleed when I block this. And I may just let it bleed because this color is kind of too bright for me anyway. So if it tones it all down a little bit, I think it should be fine. But I haven't really spent too much time thinking about it. And maybe I'll throw in some color catchers. Maybe I'll steam block it. Maybe I'll just go for it. I think that's the most likely scenario. I'm just going to block it and it'll work out somehow. But yeah, so that is that. And then my last project that I worked on um, on this trip, as you see, I didn't do that much sock knitting. I don't know why. Um, again, I just took some yarn out of stash that I didn't, I got this quite recently actually. I think I got this in like January maybe. This is um, the new Wool Addicts, um, it's like a new series by Lang Yarns and this is their Love Base. And I just um, went into a yarn store back in Füssen in the beginning of the year to get a set of needles, <laughs> as you do. Fell in love with this yarn, fell in love with the color and decided to get a sweater's quantity. So this is a 92% extra fine merino, 8% nylon yarn, it's a superwash. Um, it's about 500 meters, I think, something like that per 100 grams, but it comes in these super cute, tiny 25 gram balls. And this yarn is a chain net construction, which I thought was really interesting. And also, I still don't know how I feel about this color, but I walked in and really liked it because it seems like a very wearable color, even for like work and stuff. 
and I have a hat in this color and I wear it all the time. Like 90% of my hat wearing is done with a hat in this color. So I just took the yarn with me and decided there what kind of pattern I wanted to use and I ended up going for another pavement sweater by Vera Valimaki. And those of you who have been watching for a long time know that I have already knit three pavement sweaters. But the story is a little bit sad because the first one I knit was a faded one and that was really fun except I knit it in a too small um, size and hence I never really wore it. And then I decided to knit, um, surprise my two sisters with half knit sweaters for Christmas last year. So I knit two more and I really really like them, especially the one in navy that I knit for my um, youngest sister which kind of, I think, inspired this um, sweater, by the way. I kind of wanted to keep it for myself because that was in a bigger size and that looked so nice. So I decided to knit a fourth one in an attempt to actually have one for myself that I can keep. And this is super damp, I'm just realizing now. This was in the suitcase with possibly damp um, bikinis. So. What this has obviously done is gotten very crinkly and a little bit damp, but you get the idea. So the pavement sweater is a top-down sweater. You do a couple of short rows in the back, which I really like this shaping. Um, as you can see, I have divided for the armholes and I am now just working on the body. I'm really sorry that it's looking so crappy. I hope it didn't ruin the yarn, but I don't think so. I think it's just tiny bit damp and it's been sitting in the aeroplane but yeah that's where we are how do you feel about this color i really don't know i think this could be my next favorite color or it could be a really crappy color i have no idea how i feel about it but yeah um this is where we are halfway down the body i would say i think on none of my pavements so far have i done the sort of dipped hem short row construction that it has in the pattern maybe i'll do it on the fourth one or maybe i'll do um, another split hem because i do really like a split hem and it's less thinking but yeah that's where we are with that um i swatched for this as well and i didn't really know how i felt about the texture like it is very soft and it kind of it doesn't have that much stitch definition so i'm glad i went for a very sort of easy stockinette sweater because I don't think this would be great for like cables but I do think it could be really nice just as an everyday sort of sweater so yeah that's why we are with that the only downside to using 25 gram balls of yarn is that you constantly are changing and this is a super wash yarn so you can't spit splice so I have a lot of ends that are going to be woven in in the end and I always made sure to only change colors sort of at the side of the garment because it's fine if you can change colors and if you just weave the colors in uh, the ends in it's pretty much invisible but sometimes it's not 100% invisible and I just don't want a um, you know where I attach the new ball I don't want that just in the front of my sweater or something like that but yeah, that's where we are with that. Really enjoying it. Uh, I'm using 3.5 millimeter US size 4 needles. And I learned from my mistakes. So I went one size up from my previous one, which I think is the third size or size M in the pattern. And I have, I think, 10 balls of yarn. So I think that should be plenty. I'm probably going to be having quite a few leftovers. Um, depending on how long I knit the sleeves, but I'm thinking I'm going to do like a three quarter or maybe even like elbow length sleeve for this one because it's more like a top or like a loose sweatshirt than like a proper long sleeve sweater. So yeah, you guys, that's what I've been knitting. Like I said, I'm not going to show you any of my blankets today. I'm not showing you my airy sweater because I actually have divided for the body air in the sleeves but yeah whatever um and there's also another pair of socks that i'm knitting on um but yeah let's keep it simple for today so before i talk about what i have been getting up to um i have a bit of acquisitions to show you 
um, none of which I got on a trip. It was really, really sad. We went to a place that sold, um, they were trying to sell us cashmere, like ready-made garments and they had a knitting machine and they had these cones of beautiful cashmere and I desperately wanted to buy some and try to let make them sell me just a little bit because I had it there and they just refused and got quite mad at me so no yarn for me there's actually a mill in Mauritius as well so I kind of wanted to check that out but it all didn't really work out and I didn't want to sacrifice my honeymoon to go hunting for yarn because there is enough yarn in the world right there's enough yarn in my stash and i can always buy more but um i was actually really lucky because i had i thought that a thing that i had ordered before the wedding had gotten lost in the mail i think i waited for it for about three or four weeks and then just as we were about to leave um it turned up so i was very relieved because i kind of mentally just decided oh well you know Things just get lost sometimes in the mail and I'm not going to get worked up over a little bit of yarn before my wedding, but it turned up. So, um, you know, I am a sucker for um, Jameson and Smith yarns. Um, you may know that um, their two-ply jumper weight is one of my favorite ever yarns to do color work and just generally garments. So I tend to browse their website and it seems like every time I browse their website, um, they have a sale. And people have asked me before, like, how do you get cones of this yarn? You have to buy it straight from them, which I think is called the Wool Brokers website or something like that. Just Google it. Anyways, they had a sale and I jumped on it back in February, I think. So first of all, I got a cone of yarn and I'm not going to unwrap it. But this is their two-ply jumper weight in... This was on sale. This is 500 grams, so um, I actually found out that I can knit two sweaters out of this if I just, you know, do a little bit of color work or something with it. So I have possibly two um, jumpers in my future. I still have a another um, cone of the same yarn, same size, in a really beautiful gray, so I think they could go really, really well together. I'm itching to cast on a Guthrie sweater. I already bought the pattern the other day. And like a ton other of other patterns as well. So this is just definitely going to be well loved in the stash and knit up into sweaters yeah, at some point. And then they had a yarn in sale and I just decided to jump on it because it was an amazing deal. And it's completely different than what I expected. But this is Jameson and Smith. I should maybe show you their logo. This is their Shetland Chunky. And you know me, I never buy chunky yarn, but this is 100% Shetland. It says real Shetland wool. So it's not Shetland type wool, which we discussed in a past episode. This is the proper Shetland stuff. And this guy has um, 120 meters or 131 yards to 100 grams. So this is a 100 grams ball. And you know my love of Shetland yarns and you know my love of their two-ply jumper weight, which is also Shetland and I love it, but I know it's kind of scratchy. So I was expecting a sort of rustic, woolly feeling yarn and then this showed up and this is super soft. Like I didn't know that Shetland yarn could be so soft. I don't know what they, what they did with it. It doesn't say it's super wash, it says it's hand wash. It doesn't seem to be super wash treated. Maybe it's just because, I don't know if you can tell, but it's very, very loosely plied and spun. It's basically a single, which is then kind of twisted just a tiny bit. But this yarn is really soft, really beautiful. I was planning to knit myself a sort of chunky, um, woolly cardigan. Now I'm thinking maybe even a blanket. I don't know. I've got almost a kilo of this stuff. I think they were selling it for like three pounds. I have no idea actually. I just, I'm just, I'm just guessing. Anyways, um, and I love the color, but I'm just so taken aback. You know, like how sometimes you just expect something to be a certain way. And I expected this to be a woolly wool, like let lopey sort of yarn, you know? And this is really soft. I mean, I'm going to have to get Kai to test this because I find a lot of yarn soft that he thinks are incredibly scratchy. But yeah, this was really, really interesting. So I just got it for fun. And I'm not sure if now, like with spring and summer coming, 
I'm not sure if it's the best time to knit this. Maybe I'll just keep it. But I think this could be a really fun cardigan of some kind. So yeah, um, those are my acquisitions. And again, I kind of thought I would never see them again, which is in no fault um, of um, Jameson and Smith or the Shetland wool brokers. Um, it's just that ordering from the UK, sometimes it gets here within a day and sometimes it takes forever. And I've never really had to wait that long for something to get here. But it arrived and all is well. And I have some acquis acquisitions to show you guys. So yeah, yay. So the only other thing that I'm going to talk about very, very briefly before I just get into the non-knitting related stuff is that right before our wedding, it was really funny, I met up with my knitting friend Marion, who by the way made me the best knitted and wedding present ever. Maybe I'll show that to you on another episode. Um, and I was just saying maybe one day I do want to get some vacuum bags, like the vacuum sealed ones for my sweaters in summer because I don't really loves just storing them the way I do at the moment because we don't have moths usually but we do have um, carpet beetles and they have eaten yarn before so um, I'm super careful now all my yarn as you can see is in plastic bags and also right before the wedding possibly stress related I had this sort of sudden need to also like I have all these minis and my whips and everything is quite out there like with my blankets like all the stuff that I'm constantly working on and I have this sudden urge to wrap all of that in plastic as well um so I was thinking about these vacuum bags and literally 30 minutes after we talked about that and then had gone our separate ways I found vacuum bags so I got some and I got I think I have no idea how big they are. They're like bigger than my wingspan, I think. Um, I just got two to try um, from Chibo. And I decided to just try to vacuum seal my winter sweaters. Because I have a ton of sweaters. And secretly, I have this problem that now they don't really fit into my wardrobe anymore. So I'm thinking um, that's the best idea to... Like, I have basically vacuum wrapped all of my sort of thick colorwork rustic super warm sweaters um, and that means that now all the summery lighter sweaters like Holzgarin or like this sort of thing you know like the ones that I wear all year round I can find them easily and um, at the same time I know that I don't have to be worried about you know picking out those huge little lobby sweaters and stuff in eight months or whatever and being really sad because something has maybe been eaten or like whatever it's just and so I got some and I think I'm really happy about the solution um, we'll see if I do it in the future but I just thought that was worth mentioning because we talk a lot about how we store our yarn how we store our knits I certainly don't have the best system, but I feel so good knowing that at least those sweaters are now safe until fall and then I can worry about it then. So let me know, do you use vacuum bags for anything? Do you just leave everything out? I think it really depends on your living situation as well and on your level of how paranoid you are. And I can be very paranoid about these things. But then again, like better safe than sorry. Anyhow, um, that is it in terms of the knitting content. I hope it wasn't too discombobulated. Um, thank you so much if you're only watching up to this point. Um, that is totally understandable. I will most likely see you again in two weeks time because next week we may be away um, over Easter. Um, and if you are sticking around, um, I'll just keep on talking. Um, again, don't expect any sort of sense from me today. Uh, I am literally dizzy as I'm talking to you guys. I'm so tired. Um, whatever. Oh, well. Um, so, last time I talked to you, I was about to get married. Um, and that did happen. <laughs> Thankfully. Thankfully, I don't have to do it again. Um, no, in all seriousness. Um, where do I start? I, we got married on a Friday, um, the 29th of March, and our last day of work was the Tuesday before that. So 
To be honest, I thought I was going to be so chillaxed until the end. I thought I was going to be the easiest bride ever. But yeah, um, kind of like, I think the last 10 days before the wedding, I started to kind of get freaked out. Not freaked out in terms of getting married at all. But there was just so much stuff that needed to be done. So much stuff that needed to be organized. All these tiny things that you have to remember and... I had just this horror fantasy of forgetting something in Munich and, you know, having this big disaster because we forgot something. And at the same time, obviously, I was also preparing for being off work for two and a half weeks. So that usually means that you work twice as hard before and after you leave. And it was just craziness. But it all actually worked out perfectly. So on the Wednesday, we drove up to um, my parents' place and then further up to Würzburg. Dealt with like the legal wedding stuff, um, prenuptials and such. Um, and then on Thursday, I had my test run with my hair. And what else did I do? Oh yeah, we picked up the flowers and then Kai and I drove, do drove out to the venue, which was about 25 minutes from where my parents live and where I grew up. So we did the decoration ourselves and everything just came together beautifully. My um, um, maid of honor did the wedding cake, which was amazing. Like, I can't believe it. Um, so we basically spent the afternoon getting ready and like dealing with the DJs and all the stuff that you need to do. And then just as we were finished and got back, we had a dinner with both my family and Kai's family and Kai's sister and her family, our little niece who had flown in from England. And it was really, really, really nice. And then obviously Friday was the big day. So it was a full day. It started with me again, getting my hair done. And then we had um, our actual wedding at City Hall. Um, we actually invited all of our guests there, so it was quite a big thing. Um, it turned out really nice. Um, I think that was the scariest part for both of us because right up until like a day before the actual thing, we were reorganizing things because we were being complicated and <laughs> changing things up. Um, but it all worked out really well and like, um, that was in Rotenburg, which is such a beautiful place in, uh, in Germany if you have visited before. It's where I grew up and it's just this really old, beautiful city. Um, it's quite a tourist attraction, but it is perfect for that sort of thing. So after we were married, um, you know, you walk out to this big sort of marketplace and we um, had red balloons and that like heart balloons. And it was just really, really, really nice. Um, and yeah, and then kind of the day went from there. It also turned out to be, oh, obviously we knew um, it was also Kai's mom's birthday. So we celebrated that and then did our wedding photo shoot. And then essentially we just had a huge party with friends and family and tons of food in that, in at night. And everything just worked out. Everything was really, really nice. Um, I honestly thought that it was going to go way too fast and, you know, I wouldn't have proper time to talk to everyone, but it turned out that it was actually just the perfect amount of people and the weather was great. We were so lucky. It was sunny and I think like 15 or even 17 degrees. It was really warm and which, you know, you can't trust in that in March. It could have been snowing for all we know. So everything just worked out. We had a great celebration. We had a great party and um, we got quite late as it should on a wedding. Um, and then the next morning we stayed in the same hotel with all of our family and um, my bridesmaid and so on. And so we had a breakfast um, with everyone before we then obviously had to take everything apart again. So that actually the whole wedding it was really, really nice. Like, you you don't know. And towards the end of it, it was quite stressful. And you kind of think, oh, man, I, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm also looking forward to it being over. But it was actually just the way we had imagined it. And we feel quite lucky for that. And it's also really funny the next day when we went back to the location just to pick up, like, the gifts and such. They were obviously already preparing for the next wedding and Kai and I, we both walked past and we were like, 
thank goodness we don't have to do it again. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I think I couldn't have asked for a more perfect wedding day. And um, yeah. So that was that. And then we drove back to Munich and it was really funny. We had one night in Munich before leaving again and we just completely crashed. Like I think up until the moment that we stepped into our apartment, we were so busy with like planning and doing things and organizing things and talking to family that we didn't realize how completely knackered we were. Um, so yeah, basically up until Sunday, which is when we left to the airport again, we were just so tired and exhausted, but that was perfect because we went on a plane to, um, Mauritius. So Mauritius is an African island, um, just off uh, Madagascar. And we have, both of us have never been there before. We just kind of picked it because we wanted to go somewhere really relaxing where you had like a hundred percent chance of really hot weather, beautiful beaches, pools and such. And we had the best honeymoon. It was so much fun. Like we have never really the two of us together done like a resort sort of trip. We've always been like backpacking through Malaysia and Vietnam and doing like all these adventurous things. But for this trip, we both really wanted something relaxing and it was the perfect choice as well because we really needed it. And I think we were really lucky because our hotel was just amazing. Like we were so lucky. We had a beautiful, huge room. Um, and you just like every morning I would get up quite early and just sit on the balcony, um, watch the sunrise over the sea, over the beach and knit and knit at the pool and hang out. And yeah, I mean, it sounds like such a cliche and I don't want to bore you with it, but it was really, really, really nice. The staff were also just so funny, so friendly, not intruding. Um, it was perfect. So essentially we had the best honeymoon we could have imagined and it was really sad to go home. <laughs> Kai was kind of ready to go home. Um, but yeah, I was just, I just wanted to stay there. <laughs> but yeah, we, in the end, Obviously, we made it back home, so we still had all of Saturday Saturday there and then left at night. And now it is Sunday afternoon. I think we landed back here in Germany on at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So we have like the rest of Sunday to get used to reality again before I have to go back to work on Monday, which is tomorrow. So I'm kind of... I'm not ready for that. I think... I, I'm assuming most of you know that feeling of anxiousness when you go back to work after having a break. Like for me, that is kind of nerve wracking, but I'm thinking that once I get back into it, it'll be just fine. I mean, it's not my first day of work, is it? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the rundown. And very quickly, I think there's a couple of funny stories and things that we did that I'll talk about another time maybe. But that is the idea. Um, the one thing that I really missed was my stash. I always miss my stash. Like everything there else, like I could have just stayed there forever and just gotten fat on eating too much food, eating too much pineapple because I'm addicted to pineapple. Um, strange side note, they even had good coffee. Um, but I did miss my stash. I did miss the, the possibilities of my stash. But yeah. I could have easily stayed there another two weeks, um, but such is life. Um, yeah, so we had a good flight back home. No major hiccups, except that I ran out of knitting a little bit too early. <laughs> but I watched some really good movies. I watched The Hate You Give, which is amazing. Um, I've been meaning to read the book. In fact, I have like the trial version that you can get off Amazon before you actually buy the ebook on my phone but I haven't gotten very far but I thought the moving was, movie was incredible I'm definitely going to read the proper full version um, of the book um, yeah I think that's pretty much all that I have to talk about so I feel like I'm all over the place but maybe it's not as bad as I think um, if you do have any questions just ask and let me know what you would like me to talk about what I forgot and maybe one last thing about the wedding because you are knitters after all 
you may remember the wedding shawl that I knitted. Um, it was this um, Shailin shawl, which is a mix of like, it's a triangular lace shawl. And I knitted with a strand of mohair and a strand of alpaca and something else. Alpaca wool? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. It was this blush pink mohair shawl. And I kind of knitted it more for just, I wanted something hand knit. And because I thought it would look nice on photos. But it actually turned out to be the perfect shawl. Like, it was the perfect weather to be wearing such a shawl. And it kept me so warm and toasty without overheating, without looking, you know, like I'm all bunched up. And I was so surprised at how much I love the shawl. Like, I just thought of it more as an accessory rather than something useful. But I actually wore it a ton on the wedding and it was perfect. So I just thought that was... Just an added bonus and I took that shawl with me on the honeymoon as well so it's kind of been very symbolic and I it definitely needs a wash because it still smells like party <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be something that I will hopefully wear a lot in the future and will kind of be a special shawl to me so that was just an added bonus so yeah, I think that is it for now. Um, I've recorded for, wow, almost 50 minutes. So I think I've definitely waffled on longer than I thought I would. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Again, sorry if I'm all over the place, but oh well. Um, like I said, we will likely be away over Easter weekend. I know, we just got back. I have a business trip on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we're already planning to go away again on Thursday. Not sure if that's a smart idea, but whatever. So that's also a reason why I thought I might just do a podcast episode today and then I will most likely be back in two weeks. Um, just generally speaking, one thing that I tend to underestimate is that sometimes things don't work out as I want them to and I tend to kind of, I know that I put too much on my plate in terms of work and sometimes I do the same with podcasting so I try to stick to a schedule and do like pre-recorded videos when I can't record and all that and what I'm really noticing is just I just need to take it a little bit slower and just settle back in my now married life which sounds crazy so I don't know if the podcast is going to be bi-weekly or weekly from this point on. I'm just going to play it by ear and see how it goes. And I know that you guys will understand. So thank you so much in advance. And of course, just thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, I will maybe put in some video of the honeymoon. I'm not sure. At some point you will see pictures. And if you're really curious, you will find highlighted stories of both the wedding and... Um, the honeymoon on Instagram so you can just find me on Instagram as the happy knitting podcast you can also just type that into your browser if you don't have Instagram you can still look at the photos and yeah so you should be able to find some things there because I know quite a lot of you have been asking for photos of the dress the shawl whatever so you should be able to find some there so again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week. Um, I will see you very soon. And until then, happy knitting. Bye.